for some gas. All right. The new Avalon is super Toyota-ish, whereas this is much more Lexus-ish. Welcome back everyone. Today we have a 2007 Toyota Avalon on our channel. I want to say a huge thank you to Capital Auto Sales LLC of Frederick, Maryland and especially Enrique for providing me this car. His information will be right here in the right hand corner of the screen. So if you're looking for a car, reach out to him. Today we're going to check the car's exterior, interior, take it for a quick test drive, fit in some zero to 60 tests if of course weather allows us because as you see front wheel drive and rain they don't go too well together but you know we'll still see what happens let's get her started up and let's begin We are starting to hit this cold season with the rain, the bad weather. But I gotta say, this Avalon looks kind of futuristic for its age. It definitely is more advanced for, for its time. All right, let's hop in the back. I'll hop in the back. I'm 6'2 tall. I have a ton of space here. It's like it's like a S class back here. We have our storage, cup holders, this old trim, old fashioned wood. I think it looks really cool. We have a light right here. Everything works. Uh, rear vents. Oh, this is cool. This definitely gives me the old Lexus vibes from like the 2001 RX. Okay, I think we have the child locks on, that is why. That's why. We're gonna have to get out through, nope, can't get out. <laughs> we're gonna have to do another way then. Because the child locks are on, we're gonna have to go like this. All right. Doors closed. Let's check out the trunk. All right. Okay. We've got a good sized trunk. Definitely can fit in some luggage there. Let's check out the engine now. We got an automatic hydraulic hood, so you don't need no stick. We have the 3.5 liter V6. It's the same V6 that you'll find in the Toyota Camry V6. As far as I'm aware, it pumps out 268 horsepower. All right, let's get to the best part, the interior. Now this cabin here feels quite nice. It gives me a lot of Lexus vibes. Like, you know, the early 2000 Lexuses. We have the heated and ventilated seats. So let's turn them on. See, they're heated and cooled. And when they turn on, the light goes on. We got the cup holders here. And this is actually where our navigation information is. So we have the climate menu here, audio, menu, and this is where we have the map. And here we actually have our, uh, our music system where we can adjust, you know, our channels, disc. There's also, I think, uh, yeah, a, a tape player. Hmm, that is interesting. We got dual zone climate, passenger and driver. 
I like how you can just hide everything here. An outlet and a storage compartment, front automatic windows, memory seats. I believe this is the adaptive cruise control or what is this? I'm not sure, but somebody should tell me if you know. I would love to hear. Um, let's see. The materials feel good. They are soft everywhere. Everything is leather quilted here. So the build quality is actually pretty good. I like it. We have the mirror. Auto dimming mirror with home link and compass. Our glasses. Okay. On. Okay, there we go. Cool. Well, let's do a horn test and let's begin. The doors are auto locking. Let's get started. We also have another cool little feature here that I was gonna show you all. It's the rear sunshade if it actually works. I don't know, does it? No, I don't think it's on, it's not activated. All right, let's get going. So setting off in this new, in this 2007 Avalon, the first thing that I want to point out is the seats. They feel good, but they are very flat. Something you know you find like in a Camry, but they're even flatter. So it feels more like a bench rather than a hugging seat. The visibility is good. I can see everything clearly around me. The pillars are kind of thick definitely thicker than your standard car you can see how they start from there all the way to there and they are thick pillars so if a pass like if a pedestrian is walking you may not see them right away so you have to be more careful when looking i'll definitely share more about the ride once we get on the road because <clears throat> for me right now it's hard to tell you know whether it's it's a soft ride or can't tell yet but I think it's gonna be like Lexus style Oof. all right so the ride feels good fairly soft very plush there's definitely a handful of torque steer here especially in this weather and one of the first cars that I've ever driven, you know, personally, is, you know, my student driver car was a, a Toyota Camry V6 from 2010. And these cars have a lot of torque steer and wheel hop. I don't know what the reason is, but they just love to do that. So when driving in this kind of weather, you have to be especially careful. Also actually get our lights on as well the steering wheel is very thin it's like super duper thin but I do like the wood touch here the wood feels nice We got some good torque from the V6. The transmission is butter smooth. The shifts are very, very nice. These engines usually run forever. Very, they're very reliable.
I wish the weather was better so we could open up the performance a bit more. Unfortunately, with this weather, there's only so much you can do. Well, let's get her out onto the highway and see how she is. Wow, there is a good amount of pull here. She's sailing smoothly. Let's give her some gas. All right. Yeah, definitely has some good power. Like you give the you give full throttle and downshifts and goes right up. But I definitely get more of a barge, like a, a large barge sensation. It's like, you know, just like a Genesis. I don't know, something in between those lines. Like a G80, you get the same vibes. I definitely prefer the ride of the Avalon compared to the Camry. It's nicer. It sits on the road better. It's more comfy. If we were back in the day and you'd ask, is this worth upgrading over the Camry V6? I would say absolutely. It just feels much nicer to me on the ride. Well, Let's get Draggy connected, see if we can get anything out of this today, and we'll continue. All right, so let's let the traffic through and try a zero to 60. Let's see if we can get anything out of this today. All right, so reset the Draggy, three, two, one, let's go. Oh, yes, there we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> That is crazy. Look at the amount of wheel hop we got. And of course the zero to 60 wasn't very good at all. It was 10.8 seconds because it's, it's impossible to get any traction here. 
But let's try one more time, just for the heck of it. We're gonna do a, a smooth start. All right, three, two, one, let's go. Oh, even, even, even minor throttle inputs already give like, all right. Maybe like this would be better. All right, 10.35. Yeah, doing zero to 60s in a front wheel drive car in this weather is nearly impossible. But anyways, to continue with our test drive. What else can I share about the Avalon that I've noticed? Brakes in these cars are typically very soggy and uninformative, so if you're trying to slow down from speed, have fun. They wear out really quickly, and they do not provide the strong stopping power that you would want you know, with this kind of engine power. Um, I would definitely recommend for those of you who get these cars, please upgrade your brakes, get some better rotors, get some better pads, like seriously, get some high quality brakes. And good tires, definitely essential. See, when you add a little bit of throttle, it's fine. But if you try to like mash it, not a good idea. Because then you're just like hopping. But this way you can at least see realistic life acceleration times in the rain. Because, you know, these, these cars are rated, what, like six something seconds, zero to 60. But you gotta have like really good conditions to even get out of the seven second range. As far as the, the power here, it is, the engine is running very healthy. Like it has good power. I just can't put it down to the ground in this weather with these tires, I, I just can't. But overall, I have to say, I did enjoy the Avalon. I think it rides really nice. It's got excellent power, you know, especially for passing. It's not an off the light racer with all the wheel spin and, you know, the disadvantages of front wheel drive, but you know, you, you, you don't buy this to race off the light. Now on the highway, this definitely will move well. This, this is a very quick car. And I love how responsive the transmission is. It's like you give it a little bit of juice, it goes. It reminds me of, definitely reminds me a lot of the Camry in terms of the powertrain. But this is more refined. It's got better soundproofing. It's got a nicer interior. I like this. I like this Avalon. Well, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts about the Savalon. Would you buy one or would you look at something else? I'm definitely going to try and find a Maxima, like an 05, maybe 06, just to drive it and compare, see how they differ. But I have to say, this actually, to me, feels better than a lot of the new Toyota products that are out there, like the new Camrys and all that stuff. And I like this more than the new Avalon because the new Avalon is super Toyota-ish, whereas this is much more Lexus-ish. And Lexus is definitely the nicer option between the two. This is pretty much an ES350, I'd have to say. Um, and then you get this good reliability, a cheaper price tag. Seems like a good, like a good balance. I feel like when this car came out, I think in 2005, like this body style on the market, it must have been a great option, like a great alternative to like per se Maxima. Those who wanted more sportiness could go for the Maxima and those who wanted like a smoother ride with, with a more plush feeling could go for this Avalon.
make sure to smash like i said that like and subscribe button and till next time